everybody, Mike from Viz Academy here. It's so nice to see you, and I already can see that there's quite a big audience today. So it's really great to have you guys, and welcome everybody. Uh, so Mustafa, Abbas, Marco, uh, Yasurbek, also everybody else who's going to join in. It's so nice to see you guys. I can see that, as always, we've got a few uh, students uh, from our school, so welcome. It's nice to see you guys. Uh, so, guys, uh, those of you that are joining in to, uh, to our lesson for the first time, my name is Michael and uh, I am a teacher for Viz Academy. Viz Academy is a rendering school that will teach you how to create photorealistic visualizations in less than seven weeks. If you want to learn a little bit more, please make sure to visit our uh, website, which is vizacademy.co.uk. And there you're going to be able to learn even more about our uh, training structure and, well, pretty much about every um, tutor that we have in our, uh, let's say, uh, team. Okay, uh, I see that. Uh, okay, it's so nice to see you. Hello, Masa. Nice to see you. Hello, Nick. Um, it's so great to have you all here. Okay, so let's get started. First thing first, we're going to be creating this visual and it's mostly going to be based on the assets that we're going to be downloading, but also we're going to use some nice tricks and I'm going to show you how to speed up the process of modeling, especially for exteriors that might not really rely on as much detail as you normally would think. So what are we really going to do and what are we going to start from? Well, we're obviously going to need some resources and one of those resources is going to be our floor plan. So this floor plan is going to, um, it's not exactly what you would get from a client per se, but it's going to be a little bit easier because what we try to always do during our webinars is to accommodate those of you that are absolute beginners but also, I always try to um, add one or two tips and tricks that is going to be also interesting for those of you that are a little bit more uh, advanced. Uh, so, okay, this is going to be our base floral plan. Then this is our uh, first floor and we pretty much have a side view just for our convenience. Uh, uh, hello, Uzair. Nice to see you. Uh, truck from India. Okay, uh, nice to have a uh, nice that you're sending so much love that it requires a truck. Uh, hello, Mike. I'm from Algeria. Nice to hear that. Also, I would like to point out that uh, our webinars are more of a conversation than uh, just a simple uh, rush uh, to the goal. So we're going to answer some questions. We're going to have some fun. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them. I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to answer all of them. Uh, clean uh, live or restream. This is live, so you can ask questions. I can see you took back your question. Uh, this was a nice coincidence because I just had a chance to read your um, what you said. Okay, so as always, we're not only going to be using assets that we have in form of a floor plan or plan. We're also going to be using some 3D models that uh, come from either Chaos Library, so you're going to be able to download that if you have Corona or V-Ray installed, because that uh, software also comes with uh, Chaos Cosmos. So it's a hefty, quite big library that pretty much has everything that we may need. And in this case, I already downloaded what I'm going to need in here, but you're pretty much going to be able to find something similar or even do the same, uh, pick the same stuff. Although I'm not going to be showing you one by one which one was it. Uh, let's just agree that it's from Max3. Uh, so and now we've got a few trees that we're going to be adding for our background because our shot is going to definitely require quite a lot of trees and those are going to be manually placed so we obviously need to have a need to have control over that we're going to scale some we're going to uh, move some but mostly we're going to uh, be uh, 
uh, just rocking those assets. So we've got a bonsai tree that I downloaded from, uh, let's say, one of the friendly websites, some curtains, shutters, and obviously some random furniture that you can also find uh, on Chaos Cosmos. But let's get started. Uh, so one of the best in Corona render. Thank you for that. Uh, hello from India. Nice to hear that. Uh, Kurdistan, uh, you look pretty good, bro. Hello from Uzbekistan. That's so nice to hear. And uh, especially that, you know, people online tend to be a little bit uh, harsher on uh, pretty much every possible aspect. So getting compliments. Thank you. Uh, one of the best Corona. Okay, so first step that we're going to uh, take is use our floor plan. So as for the floor plan, you may be asking, okay, where I'm going to get it. I'm going to post it in our video description right after our webinar. Uh, so you can uh, pretty much watch and uh, try to attend instead of uh, following what I'm doing. I'm also going to be cutting some corners so you don't have to uh, see me trace every possible box that is uh, really in 3ds Max. Okay, with all of that out of the way, what is our first step? Uh, me personally, I'm, I love using one of my favorite plugins, and that is Blueprint Noob. Uh, really, it's the name Noobzor BR Creator. I love it because it's a little bit goofy, uh, but it's also super easy to use. What we do is we drag and drop our uh, floor plan to our uh, plugin and we just drop it. You don't need this plugin because you might as well just use regular um, plane and uh, set up this using the size of in pixels because it literally does that. And funny enough, uh, because of the size in centimeters, uh, somehow, magically, being the right scale, I, ne I never intended for this, but we've got this measurement here, right? It uh, shows us uh, the distance between zero and one. It's one meter. And if we're going to, uh, wait a second, if we're going to try to create something, we're going to see that the size of this box is actually matching exactly one meter. So I never, I was never lucky, uh, this lucky to create a, a PDF or um, any kind of floor plan that would not require scaling. So this time it's going to be one step easier, but we still need to delete uh, the copy that we don't need. And we're going to make sure that we only work with what we need. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I already, had a little bit of a go with, but we're going to just delete all of that and we're going to start from scratch. So how do we really start? Because uh, whenever you have a floor plan like this, uh, chances are that you're not even going to be able to see the details. Um, in such case, you want to go to this plus icon in the left uh, top corner, go to configure viewports, and we're going to set up our textures. Uh, just because I'm lazy, I set up everything to 4096 and make sure to do the same because by default, you're going to have a little bit smaller values. And when you do, uh, when you do have those, you're going to see that whatever we have in our viewport is going to be slightly lower quality and no details are visible right now. That is why we're going to go for 4096. Uh, and it's going to vastly improve how our textures are going to be viewed. And in the end, we're just going to make sure that every aspect in here is going to have it. Not only because it, we're going to display our textures in a higher, uh, in a little bit higher quality, because this is texture, but also any kind of background uh, images that we might be adding along the way. And big procedural maps, it will also look a little bit better. What it means is, for example, noise maps are going to look better. This makes your texture, so any kind of bitmaps looks a bit, look better. And whatever is in the background is also going to look slightly better if we top up those values. Okay, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, Intel Core i7, and uh, a very powerful one, but image still takes about two or three hours as uh, per uh, regular resolution. Is it normal or what I, uh, what I can do? 
So Mustafa, in such case, I would really need to see the scene because um, the render length is going to always be dependent on your uh, computer specs, but also your com your uh, composition. So if your um, scene has obscure amounts of iterations in Turbo Smooth, gajillions and gorillions of uh, these, it might be the reason why it takes so long. But uh, it's always a case-to-case -case scenario. So um, you can also check, uh, this sounds like a laptop. So check if your power management is not set up for, um, let's say, power saving mode, because it has to be for uh, set to performance. Otherwise, you're going to uh, risk a little bit lower performance overall. Okay, uh, hey, are you going to render it? We're going to try to, and we're going to try to do it in under an hour. So how about we now get started? So since we already have our floor plan, and this is again an image and not any kind of uh, uh, plan that you would get in a form of a CAD file, but this is uh, increasingly uh, more and more common to get files like this. And we're going to try to use the most common tools possible. And so it's going to be the most beginner friendly ever. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, we're going to be adding a lot of stuff that is going to be random in here because the interior is not going to play as much of a role and more environment and uh, well, everything that's not interior. So uh, as you noticed, I started with a simple plane and then I can right click on it and converted it into editable poly. This allows me to quickly change the properties or uh, values in my uh, object. So I'm just going to make sure that it's actually on zero Z value because I have already set my uh, blueprint to be a little bit lower than zero. So it's easier for me to find myself in the whole scene. I can also freeze the floor plan because I'm not, no longer going to need to select it at any point. So I'm going to do just that. Okay, so we've got this plane and we're just going to try to trace uh, using this uh, simple editable poly method. This will allow you to um, test or let's say train yourself a little bit with the 3ds Max UI. It's a simplified version of a regular uh, commission that I get but the scene that we're working on was created by one of our students. Uh, I, if I recall correctly, it's Dominica, and uh, I would like to thank you for sending us your scene. What you can see is I'm leaving out uh, gaps, or let's say I'm making sure that I have enough geometry for each element that I'm going to be working with. And I make sure that I don't pay attention to details like wall thickness or uh, any kind of um, details like one or two millimeters because that's a hugely redundant uh, thing to do. In the end, we're going to be viewing this object from a distance of 15 meters. And since we're going to do just that, it would be a huge waste of time to pay attention to uh, details like one centimeter or two uh, or even five uh, at this point. So we're just going to ensure that we uh, trace uh, the best we can because we don't want to be sloppy and also we're going to take into consideration that not everything is going to be uh, perfectly done because in the end it is uh, just a creative image not a commission typically when working on commissions you're going to be super precise but in this case we don't have to so i already have my main ring for this building I can also add this inner wall by quickly adding a few lines and just stretching it out. And I think I'm going to do just that because uh, we're going to need this wall regardless a little bit later. So um, it's like we're doing some of the interior part. In between, uh, please tell us the basic P uh, PC config for a fast and effective renders. Thank you from India. So there's no such thing as fast and uh, reliable computer um, Okay, there is, but I can only tell you what I consider minimum uh, valid specs. I cannot give you any kind of hardware, um, let's say, recommendations, because that would be against our policy. But um, for 
uh, Swift work in 3ds Max, I would say that you're going to need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. RAM is not the most important element of your computer, but it's what will allow you to have more items in between your scene. And it also has a little bit of an, imp of an impact on the rendering time, especially if you're going to be out of your RAM. So now you can see that this side view is going to be extremely helpful to us because we're going to add a shell modifier to our already existing ring. This way, I'm going to be able to add the outer value and just simply trace it up until I'm going to be satisfied with the height. I also want at least two additional segments because this way I'm going to be able to uh, tackle all the issues a little bit faster. So let's convert this to a little poly and oh, no, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm not going to do it because this is an instance. And if I'm going to uh, convert this to a little poly, it's got the instance link between this object and that object is going to be broken. It's already broken because I didn't pay attention and just copied it. So I might as well just uh, convert this to a little poly after all. Okay. So 16 gigabytes is the minimum. I would say that a fairly modern um, uh, processor, uh, AMD or Intel, or really we have only two choices, is going to be uh, your best bet. When it comes to Apple devices, it's not that they're bad, because they're not, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend them uh, for, your, uh, for the work purposes. It is good, and typically uh, uh, they serve their per purpose. But the thing is that I'm not a huge fan of Apple devices due to the fact that you kind of, they are designed for a little bit different applications. And those applications not do not necessarily include 3D rendering. Uh, so if, if you're working with Photoshop or video in video editing, you can go for Apple, but in 3D, it's just not yet there. So don't get tricked because, uh, yes, Apple is great, but it's just not uh, for this purpose. Okay, so we've got our first main element, so I might as well just delete what I had uh, as my leftover. Um, this culprit may uh, come from the model itself. If it was me, I try to disable all models and render it, enable uh, the model one by one, and try to fi uh, find the culprit. Give it a try. Yes, that's a very uh, healthy uh, advice, I would say. Arif, thank you. Uh, what is the recommendation you give for people that render with GPU instead of CPU? Thanks of, of from Bologna. Uh, Bogota. Okay, that's a new one. Uh, do you save this workshop? Yes, it's going to be recorded and you're going to be able to rewatch it at any time. So if you're going to be working with GPU, um, I would say stick to software that handles a GPU. That would be uh, probably, um, what is that software that the Tyson guy created? Uh, I re don't remember the name of it because F-Storm, that's a very good uh, software when it comes to 3D rendering on GPUs, but I would say switching to uh, processor rendering is probably your best bet. Okay, now since we are going to add some details, let's look at our windows. We're going to need to create this. Um, we're going to need to create this. Um, I would say a, sh a very nice shape in uh, in our building. So we need to leave this wall, but we need to make sure to do the cutout. So what we're going to be cutting is pretty much all of this, leaving that. And then we're going to do something like that. Okay, so since we're going to be doing it in a second, we're going to jump to 3ds Max and um, uh, refer to our floor plan. So let's go ahead and see what elements are we supposed to really be working with. Okay, I want to make sure that we work with the right um, walls. So I'm just going to start deleting them one by one. First, I'm going to select the top two uh, elements and just shift and drag it. In 3ds Max 2022 and older, uh, this Swift Extrude option was introduced. And I believe that this is one of the best um, updates that 3ds Max had for a long, long time. Because modeling becomes super, super efficient. And we're going to uh, continue adding those details. Oops, I went a little bit too far with my selection. So we're going to Alt and 1 to do a swift loop. So let's swift loop this 
and deselect those two elements and shift and move those. Now we're going to shift delete that and we've got our window here. So we're going to also do the same. Soon I'm going to show you a magical trick, I would say, uh, because it's going to be one of those things that um, nobody's going to tell you about, but I will, uh, because I know that this is going to vastly speed up your uh, the rendering process and also overall modeling in 3ds max for you guys and so now we need to make sure that we also have this block in the middle so i'm going to make sure to grab one of the polygons shift and drag it as uh, control shift drag it and we're just going to scale it up and make it happen so i need to make sure that we have exactly what we need flip it shift drag it to the top okay and now we're going to sw swiftly align it where we really needed it okay so this was quite easy so far and i hope that everybody's going to be able to uh, follow with uh, just the basic modeling uh, part but if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, hello sir hello sir to you as well interior 3d designer uh, nice uh, okay hello from south africa how could we have the same 2d floor plan you are working on we're going to have it uh, you're going to have it in our video description uh, as a link so you're going to be able to download it for yourself and it's going to be in the form of jpeg where can i send my work with corona render to know my level and your recommendation for an advanced course uh, from viz academy that is suitable for me mustafa that's a very uh very uh I would say specific question. Please go to okay, notepad. Um allow me to just quickly enlarge it. So this is the email I would like you to use to contact us and uh, send us your work for the evaluation with the questions about our training. Also guys, this is our main website. So if you want to learn more about our training and overall, uh, well, ask questions here. Uh, so you're going to be able to pretty much um, talk to either me or one of, our, of my colleagues and we're going to answer your questions. And if you need some uh, evaluation, we don't do, let's say, a portfolio evaluation, um, but we're going to be able to at least tell you if our training will help you or not. Because there's, there are, there's a chance that you are already a very advanced user of 3ds Max and uh, you might not need me. I mean, um, I'd love to have you as my student, but I'm not going to push it. It's all about making sure that you come uh, to us when you need the training, because uh, it wouldn't be fun to have somebody uh, waste their time and be bored because they cannot learn anything because you might be just a pro with some experience. And at that point, I doubt I'm going to be able to uh, give you uh, the, the knowledge that an intermediate or a beginner user would gain. But I must also point out that we had a quite a few um, pros joining our training and I must say we had a, quite a lot of success with them as well um, because we do not limit our knowledge so whenever you come to our training you're going to gain a little bit of an option that nobody else really uh, gives you uh, access to professionals to ask them questions either related to our training or just simply um, uh, about the industry and this is part of our uh, online support so now the trick comes in since we've got our walls we probably need the floor and all the rest uh, so before we continue we're going to make sure to um, trace that ceiling and uh, luckily the ceiling is also the top for uh, this element so we're just going to uh, copy this uh, this part and uh, thanks to the uh, to this pillar uh, we're going to swiftly align everything now i'm going to use a simple line to create this roof element because i believe it's going to be the fastest way of doing it and let's just make sure that we have everything in position i'm going to uh, also um, make sure that we do not waste time on anything that is going to be let's say redundant because we already covered quite a lot of stuff 
during our different webinars and I don't want to repeat uh, too much knowledge because uh, it's going to be boring to you and that would make it a really, really bad experience for, uh, for all of us. So long story short, I want to make sure that those webinars, our webinars are going to be interesting to you as our audience. So now we pretty much have most of the building. Now we can hide this element and finally do the tricky trick. Uh, okay, I just and the next object gets lost in the bigger object. Thank you. Hi, from Canada. I was going to ask how would do, uh, how would be able to model something big like stadium with real world measurements when I make a big project with real world measurements, Max camera doesn't. So that would require you to work a little bit with uh, additional options. And uh, in that case, it's going to be actually related to something called a camera clipping. A lot of times when you have too big of a scene, uh, your, um, your, let's say, 3ds Max world is going to get a little bit uh, distorted. And for that, we're going to need to uh, use camera clipping. Wait a second, where is it? Um, I've forgotten where the viewport clipping was. And at the moment, Blunt viewport. Uh, I during live streams, it's always uh, something that you have in front of you, and sometimes it's going to be just a big problem. So viewport clipping may help you because it's going to allow you to look into your scene at r different ranges. So you're going to have to, uh, you're going to be able to increase and decrease the range. So viewport clipping is probably going to uh, save your life. Otherwise, everything is going to get distorted. So uh, thank you for the Canadian question. Uh, now, uh, hello, Rafa. Nice to see you. Uh, adjust and next object gets lost in the bigger object. Yes, so that's pretty much what I would uh, go for. Thanks so much, really. Uh, you are a great man. So are you, Mustafa. Uh, something wrong with the, uh, with the voice. What do you mean uh, wrong with the voice? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Because I want to make sure that you can hear me. Uh, is there any kind of extra sound or is there a kind of, uh, any kind of problem? Uh, please describe it. I would highly appreciate that. Hello, uh, Mewtwo. <laughs> uh, you can try into Royal Clone, also adjust the unit setup, the meters, kilometers. Yeah, that pretty much will fix it. How to mix the default shading and edges in uh, the view, Stefan? Uh, what you can do is simply go for F in the viewport and that's going to go for edged faces uh, that's pretty much it uh, voice is good thank you and we're going to continue okay uh, so we've got we're already overdue for the windows trick uh, so first create a plane we're going to do a plane for one surface make sure to turn on auto grid go to length and width segments set it, set them to one for our upcoming window. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure to only have those two elements selected, and we're going to more or less put the window inside in in the middle of our uh, in the middle of our wall. So now I'm going to convert this object into editable poly. So con uh, right click, convert to editable poly, and we're only going to use X Y Z axis for this object. So quickly, we're going to adjust all of the properties. Uh, please remember that in this particular case, uh, we're going to create one gigantic window and we're going to split it in half. And there's pretty much going to be four windows, fifth window, and another um, six windows, then four, and then uh, so on and so forth. So we're going to split those, but we're going to start with a simple plane. And uh, the tricky to trick is going to be fantastic. You're going to like it. If you don't, um, you get your money back. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. I'm not going to need this part here, so we're going to re uh, remove it. So shift and drag it down. Uh, we're going to also remove this part because it pretty much is the same. Uh, so now we're going to continue. Probably we're going to still adjust some of the elements, but let's continue. Alt 1 to create a swift loop. And now we're going to continue yet again. Okay. So all we need to do is drag our plane so it's going to more or less fit our walls. So in this case, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but thanks to the snapping, I'm going to ensure that I'm in the middle of my wall because that's the funny or important part that you need to remember about as we're going to use, use you know it, trick. 
So now we connect this and we pretty much have almost all of our windows done. Now for an opposite uh, side or let's say um, for a 90 degrees wall, we're going to do almost the same, but we're going to copy this object because it's important for me to have the pivots correctly aligned. In some cases, when you're going to have gajillions of uh, windows, it's not going to be that valid. But for uh, simple houses like this one, it's going to be a godsend option for you guys. So now let's uh, snap everything where we want it. Okay, this part is going to be gone. We're going to apply one more swift loop here, and we're going to split this one half. Okay, what are we doing here? Um, perfecto, but this came out a little bit wrong. So let's hope it's going to work flawlessly. It will, but uh, now I'm just um, making a little bit of attention. So let's add our swift loop, and this is where the trick really comes in. So did you know that you can select all the edges in your uh, in your building and just simply go for a split? This will create individual polygons that are going to now represent separate elements. That being said, we can now select all of those and create borders out of them. So this is going to allow us to create shape from selection linear. So what that allowed us is to create a new set of splines that will be, um, let's say, working as our windows but this cannot be a window yet because we need to add a special modifier to it that special modifier is also going to be related to the fact that i pre-prepared something special for you guys a super duper trick so we got a sweet modifier which is a basic version of the modifier so there's nothing fancy about it just yet but we also have this very nice uh, section of a window, which is going to carry a few very important elements. First of all, uh, with our splines, we can also apply material IDs. So what it means is you can add different material, uh, sorry, you can add different IDs to different splines, uh, which probably sounds a little bit far-fetched because how would I be using it? Well, you're going to find out in a second because everything in this window is going to be material ID 1, but some parts are going to be material ID 2 and material ID 3. So now, if we're going to select the sweep modifier, go to custom, pick, and pick our shape like I did right now, we're going to be able to create this window based on a spline. So, what we're literally adding a sweep modifier following a window profile and adding it to an object. So if I'm now going to, for example, add some kind of modification, this window is going to follow. So I can add a palette, and this window is now going to have a little bit of a curve, but it has a perfect shape of the window that I wanted. So I can copy the modifier because I don't want to go through the process of drawing a window uh, profile, but you, you can pretty much just copy something similar to this one. I actually based this on one of the commissions I had. Uh, I just dropped a few details out of it. So now we're going to select our shape. So this is the spline and there can be a little bit of a problem out there. So we're going to paste and we're going to see if it worked flawlessly like I predicted. It did. So the reason why we went for this swept we modifier is very simple. It allows us to decide where where we want to set our windows and how thick they will be. On top of everything, because we've got all of the details we wanted, we also set uh, pre prepared our windows glass, which is a super huge time saver if you're going to work with a custom uh, made windows. So all we need to do now is literally. Um, copy the same trick into this part and we're pretty much done so select all the edges uh, now we're going to split them we're going to uh, go for borders select all the borders create shape from selection linear and thanks to this we now have the shape again 
All we need to do is paste the modifier and make sure that it's set to the middle of the window. And we just took care of all of the windows in a second. Plus, we've got quite a hefty number of details in here. So it's extra cool because you didn't have to even do the detail inside, but it magically appeared. Uh, so it's going to be one of those very nice things to have. Okay, so now we can go back and try to unhide our ceiling. Okay, so this pretty much means that we're now going to be uh, creating some additional elements. Due to the fact that building the top floor is almost going to look the same way, I kind of cheated and prepared myself a little bit to this webinar. So we're going to try to turn it on, uh, turn it on, and it's going to look exactly the same and it's already aligned. So what I did here is I've added the same tricks and the same ideas, uh, but I've added one more element, which is this ring around my, um, around my, uh, let's say, ceiling. Uh, so the, this roof is going to be now copied. We're going to copy this element and also create a copy of this one part. So shift and control. Dab, uh, control V to create a copy without movement. So actually, we're going to create a copy. Now, since we've got this element, and I don't need this extrusion, I'm going to delete it. So now we're going to paste the sweep modifier. But this is the different one. This is now the ring around our ceiling. So I first need to make sure to move it around. Uh, that what an amazing tutorial. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just make sure to add a few mirrors here and there. Okay, so I need to move it slightly higher and align it as best as I can. Remember that at this point, the differences between those two parts are not going to play any role because our camera is already pre-set up to be in the right position. Because whenever you will be working with your clients and uh, you will be probably... Um, planning ahead, which is very important in our industry. Uh, you need to remember that whenever you, um, out, you're going to take a commission, you're going to have to do some pre-renders or let's say uh, sketches for the building. You have to first decide with your client where they really want that house to be, what angle we're looking for. Always, you're, you're always going to have to adjust something, but, uh, the difference between starting and building absolutely everything around your building and actually knowing what you're doing because your client specifically wants you to do a shot from the garden side. If that's the case, you're going to place your camera, suggest a position and do as much as you need without doing the opposite side. So you're going to save a tremendous amount of time. Unless it's going to be a 360 of a house, you're going to be a little bit, uh, you're going to need to do a bit more. But in my case, it's non, a uh, non-issue. So the windows were done exactly the same way I shown you. Uh, this balustrade or this, um, this carriage um, or balcony actually was done using just simple boxes. So there's no trick to it. Uh, there's no need to, uh, for me to describe it. But if uh, you are an absolute beginner and you, you feel a little bit intimidated uh, by that, what I would do to make this as efficient as I can is first I would create a huge box. Then I would convert it to a little poly and split it wherever I need it. So let's say we could, we want this to be symmetrical and have their uh, nice connections, not some kind of randoms. So we're going to go for connect and we're going to wait for my 3ds max to respond to auto save remember guys always save your work because it may be the difference between uh life and death i once worked for my uh, in uh let's say interior design company and i was uh, smarter than the well than the life itself and uh, because of that i thought that it's going to be a good idea to save a little bit of time on uh, well, turning off the autosave. I turned it off and uh, yeah, I was working extremely fast because I didn't wait those 30 seconds for the autosave each 15 minutes. And well, two weeks went by and for some reason, my file got corroded. Even the copy of my file that I saved so many times got corroded. 
And well, I started panicking because tomorrow we're going to have our clients. And uh, well, auto saves weren't there. And you can imagine that I was absolutely thrilled about that. Lucky for me, I had one of the copies from like a week ago, so I was able to quickly do the changes overnight. Well, not everything was ready, but it wasn't, uh, it at least wasn't nothing. Uh, but you can imagine, nobody was uh, thrilled about that. Okay, so now we've got this very simple and boxy object. What I like doing is splitting or chamfering the elements just to introduce a little bit of the uh, difference or let's say distance between those elements. Now we're going to add a shell modifier. So it's going to not look like a huge block, but it's going to be one centimeter. And this is the main idea behind doing those kind of balustrades really fast without re really thinking about it. Hello world, hello from Nigeria, and nice to uh, have you. Okay, I've been using 3ds Max for two years now for asset creation on games. Feel like I have learned so much from this life already. Jordan, that's... Oh, thank you, that's super nice of you. Sir, how a good 3ds Max or Corona is for fast renderings? Like, can I do it in 10 or 15 views a day, especially interior visualization work? Yes, but um, it's not the case of can I do um, 15 or 10 images? Yes, but it all depends on resolution, uh, the scene complexity, because if I'm going to now turn on rendering of what I have literally built uh, in this scene, we're, I'm going to be able to uh, drop a two hour long video for you in uh, less than an hour, but uh, the quality is not there. Uh, so it all depends on what you would like you know, me to create for you or what you're going to be creating for your clients. Uh, so this is not really a, that good of a question in this case because it's all going to be dependent. Hello everyone, just joined in. Hello Michael, I will, uh, I will, the, video be, uh, will the video be available later on. Yes, Chara, it will be. So uh, if you have joined in uh, just a second ago, it's okay. We're going to be able to still accommodate you. Okay, so we've got the uh, vast majority of our building done. Whenever it comes to, well, the environment and building everything for our scene, typically you're going to do split it in three elements. First, it's going to be the ground of the building itself. So typically what I do is I try to be as lazy as possible. Because uh, just like somebody smarter than me just once said, uh, laziest people do the best type of work. That's a huge lie and I tested it. Don't ever believe that. But they at least try. So create shape from selection. It's created. We're going to do another linear. And again, we're going to select this shape because shapes are absolutely amazing in 3ds Max. And let's just go ahead and create an extrusion. So this extrusion is going to be our floor or let's say our uh, floor limiter because what our floor is going to be really made out of is a simple line inside so we might as well just uh, select every line inside now i'm going to do this swift loop as i'm doing now double click it and it's not working why because this loop is not exactly what the one i've just selected and created so let's double click it now i've got this inner loop I'm going to, again, create shape from selection, linear, because it's going to be easier for me. And now what is going to be a good idea is to probably remove this part, unless you're really, really into details here, but we're not. So we're going to affect pivot only, make sure to, the, to center the object and go back. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to press zero or minus one on my object. And this is going to be my floor for my um, interior. So let's go for floor generator. Yes, so floor generator is the most uh, commonly used plugin for 3ds Max. In most of the cases, uh, you can just uh, use the free version, but if you are a little bit more ambitious, go ahead and purchase the full version like I did. I recommend those, uh, this kind of software because, well, since they are giving you a, so the most popular software out there for free, you should at least test it. Uh, hello from South Korea, Pakistan, uh, and again, Pakistan, uh, nice. 
art studio i would appreciate if you would limit yourself to one uh, message at a time and uh, hello something 47 <laughs> nice to see you again uh, do you recommend rendering video animation from corona or is it better to use real-time rendering like lumion or 5d render um it's a again a tricky question it all depends what your goal is if i would be going for quality and uh, photorealism corona all the time if i'm only going for the um, juggling ideas and showing the overall concept to my client i would consider different software not because corona cannot handle fast rendering but well if something is built for low quality fast rendering and that's what i'm looking for i'm probably going to take the software tailored for that although i still would use corona even for the easier ones uh, hello from india uh, hello from iran uh, this is my friend's project you copied i would say that uh, it's probably not really possible although this is um our uh, students work that is based on one of the inspirations that she chose but if your uh, friend has designed it uh, say hello to him because we're using uh, one of the concepts that uh, we're going to in our stream so now with floor generator we're going to make sure to uh, just add this quick uh, floor into our interior so again looking through our camera you can see that we pretty much nailed absolutely every aspect of our interior but now if you uh, if we're going to be is uh, corona or very better for photorealism um both are fine at the moment i prefer corona due to the fact that corona is simpler and it allows you to be an artist instead of an engineer uh, yes, Corona uh, has also its ups and downs, and uh, it's not a perfect solution to absolutely every uh, possible pro uh, problem you may encounter. But I work uh, with Corona since the alpha version of it, and uh, if I recall correctly, the first open alpha that was uh, that you had to uh, to obtain it, you had to create something that looked photorealistic. And at that time, I, re I remember that huge, huge leap of, in quality of my work once I started working with Corona. Um, in V-Ray, you typically have unpredictable results. Okay, by the way, um, I just selected the uh, floor cap that we uh, created previously, and we're going to make sure to go over and just simply create a new shape that's going to be, well, part of the floor plan. We're only going to um, do the outline because, as always, we're going to do it as fast as possible. In a second, we're going to look at our reference because it's uh, one of those things that we always have to look at from time to time. So let's make sure to add it in. Okay, so this is pretty much it. Um, I hate doing part two um, when it comes to our webinars, but I can already see that we're a little bit slower than I anticipated. And uh, without talking, I would be a little bit faster, uh, but I kind of want to have a little bit of a conversation with you guys. Uh, so I apologize if you came here for just um, twice as, as well, uh, double speed that we usually have. Okay, so now I'm going to go for shapes, select, and we're going to select the shape that I have previously created. Let's go for attach. And now I can go for extrude. And uh, considering that I'm going to create steps for my, uh, for my uh, terrace, we're going to make sure to do the extrusion on a minus value. You can see that there are some artifacts visible here, and that's due to the fact that my two elements are not exactly aligned. So I'm going to make sure that the line number one and that line number two are going to be perfectly aligned and that's uh, going to be pretty much it. So let's go for zero. And now when I extrude everything, it's going to just work absolutely fine. So with everything unhidden, we can see that it works. Okay, for the ground, I'm going to just go for a simple plane and put it slightly below my scene. So plane, and we're going to go for a minus 40 case because again this is how much we need for our floor uh, to really uh, uh, well to really show it okay now 
we have the ma vast majority of our building done. Now, what we need to do in order before we can render anything is prepare all the details. So yes, you typically will be using some assets. So I'm going to just go ahead for it and um, save you a little bit of a pain of me as placing a few curtains and elements in the scene. So second floor detail, let's just turn it on and let's examine what it is before we really uh, dive into it and uh, go further. Because I really want you to also consider that we don't have to uh, trace each and every box. I'm just going to show you what's going on. Okay, so UBW, uh, we've got our floor generator for the walls to create this kind of effect. At the same time, we've got the floor generator in two strategic um, spots, so it's pretty much done. Okay, so we've added one material for all the wooden elements, and you're going to enjoy it. But I want to show you how to add the bottom part, or let's say the bottom um, floor generator, because that's one of those things that is not entirely that clear. How do we build this kind of floor generator so that it fits to our interior? Because normally you would probably want to trace some kind of shapes and that could take a while. But thanks to the 3ds Max being absolute genius, we don't need to. Um, this is better if you keep talking since you remove uh, some doubt out of the questions. Thank you. Uh, so he hello or, or hello, <laughs> Yo Kang. Nice to have you. Um, assalamualaikum, as, assalamu alaikum. I cannot uh, pronounce this, sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, hello to you too, um, Dinor. Okay, um, can you please make a webinar about interior vegetation, ivy, and hanging plants? How to get realism in interior vegetation? That's a nice idea. We might just do that. Okay, so as I said, we're going to go ahead and convert one of the elements. Oh, Ricardo, nice to see you. Uh, Ricardo is uh, one of our recent graduates, uh, so nice to see you. Um, also, we had Masa earlier on, which also uh, just recently finished Viz Academy with uh, really amazing results. So converting this element to Editable Poly, we can now just go ahead and use Inset to create those shapes. As I remember what I was doing earlier, I'm just going to type in the values that I needed. And you guessed it, we can trace the same shapes and do exactly the same thing we did prior to uh, our editing. So let's go ahead and go for some detachments, go for element. And in this case, I'm going to detach this as an object. So it's a totally new object in uh, on its own. So again, we're going to detach it, but as an element, as a clone, and we're going to go ahead and do it. Now we're going to go ahead and just select those polygons that are opposite. So detach this as well, because it's pretty much the same thing. Hide the element that I don't need. Okay, just did a huge, huge... Um, what did I just do? Wait a second. Wait a second, uh, I got a little bit bamboozled. Uh, so, okay, once again, we're going to detach this part. Now this is an element, it's a clone. So this is going to create a new object. I got a little bit carried away because I, I talked too much. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, do it again. So at least I noticed my mistake. So let's hide. And now we've got those two parts here. This is going to allow us to add our floor generator without any problems. Since this is a flat surface, I'm going to be able to go for floor generator yet again. And with uh, floor generator actually being a smart uh, modifier, it remembers exactly its own settings. So uh, this way, I'm going to just paste the copy and rotate it by 90 degrees uh, where I need it. So we're going to go to the direction, go for 90 degrees, and this way, we're going to have all the details of our building in seconds. Again, we're working in a way that's going to allow us to be efficient. It's not going to be a good idea to follow some kind of magical, special pro tricks that will take you two hours to complete the basic task. Um, that's the type of tutorial I hate watching because 
um, that is something that I all often find myself confused by the pro methods that in the end are pro only because some guy said that it is. And I think that the best method of working with 3ds Max is the fastest one. So if you can do something faster than I can, show me it. But for now, we're going to stick to the methods I have in here. So detach as clone as well. We're going to do this one, detach as clone as well. And we now hide this element and we have everything done. Paste, bravo. And again, paste. And we pretty much just finished modeling our whole building because all the details are there now. Um, we probably will need to add some lamps on the elevations and unhide a few additional objects. But let's focus a little bit on the environment and how we can tackle it. Because at, uh, I am Adil from Mor Morocco. Nice to have you. Thank you. I have a box. Can I have every face a different material without detaching the spaces? Mustafa, yes, you can. That's... Uh, that's actually the default uh, way uh, 3ds Max creates boxes. Did you know that? So whenever you have a box in 3ds Max, luckily I've got a gray one, um, by default you're going to have a box with different uh, polygon IDs. So I would recommend you to uh, dive into uh, the following topics. First, multi-sub-object uh, material and also material IDs. So we've got our polygon so this is our box our polygon and we go slightly lower to the ids so by default your box is going to start with six different um different ids so id number one number two and number three and so on and so forth each id is going to represent a different set or selection of polygons and in your multi-sub object uh, basic um, parameters material, it, you can really treat it as a host material for any kind of colors and qualities that you may want to add to your object. I'm not going to create multiple materials because that would be a little bit of a waste of your time again, guys, but we're going to just show you that we can quickly add different colors to different polygons. But, oops, I just goofed it because I've added this material to the whole object. So now we can see that some of the uh, elements are black because those are unassigned uh, IDs. So there's no material, it just uh, displays as nothing. And we've got a purple one, we've got a gray one, and the rest is black because we had nothing in here. Uh, so let's see what uh, else uh, we can do with our IDs. Your IDs can be used for uh, different modifiers and they can um, also decide on some properties of your objects. But that's actually going to be a bit more complex. If you want to add multiple materials to one polygon or one set of polygons, that's when you're going to need to use um, masking and uh, corona layered material or blending material. Long story short, it's just like Photoshop, but in 3D. Okay, so we've got the building, we've got the details. We kind of need to copy the details for the bottom, but this time we're going to spend some, well, we're going to cut some corners and I'm going to start copying some of the elements that I shown you at the beginning of our webinar. Because why waste time if we can just simply take ready-made objects? Uh, so, you are just amazing. That was great honor to be your student. And I wish the course didn't finish. Uh, okay, Masa, thank you. That's so nice of you. I'm, I'm really humbled. Uh, that actually brings a smile to my face. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Uh, calling from uh, Mozambique. Okay, but how can I... Uh, how can... And UV each face with one UV. Oh, plain. That's another good question. Uh, let's uh, spend some, a few minutes on that. So you cannot really do multiple UVs with one UV, but 3ds Max is very smart. And so if we convert an object to editable poly, what you will be able to do is again we're going to have to create a new material to uh, to actually talk about that. Let's go for a checker. And we're going to go for this purple material, add it, let's go for 4 by 
before and now. Since our object is going to have this material, we have it as our base, uh, not weight, we want base color. So this is a physical color now. We've got it on our all material. By default, your box and all the primitive objects in 3ds Max will start with some kind of UVW mapping. There are multiple ways of handling UVW mapping, and I recommend you watching our UVW mapping uh, video for that. But to answer your question, we can go for UVW, UVW map, and simply while you have your polygon selected, you can set up individual poly or sorry, individual grid or projection for this specific polygon. So let's go ahead and just rotate it slightly so the rest is untouched compared to a poly again to kind of burn it in or bake it in. And that way we have an individual mapping for this one object. You can also use multiple levels of mapping, which is called UVW um, channels. But to go over the channels, we would need a few extra minutes and I don't want to go into that from a too deep. Uh, hello from Turkey, and uh, nice to have you, Bahri. I just recently was in Turkey, and I must say, lovely, lovely place. Uh, so I must say that uh, I'm probably going to visit uh, at some other point as well. Uh, okay, I've got uh, we've got more than one uh, person from Turkey. Then um, let's continue. As I've said, we want to build this area here, this small area with those pebbles. Uh, so let's call it a small, um, how would you call it? Um, yeah, small play field uh, or just area. So uh, we've got those two, three, uh, three areas actually with additional elements. And I was about to copy some kind of uh, extra assets, but we're going to go back to it in a second. First, we're going to go for box. Uh, let's just create it, make sure that it's big enough, lower it, and we're going to make sure to do a bit of a cutting uh, using some objects. Uh, so, guys, let's stick to English, please. Uh, that would be highly appreciated. Um, I don't want, I cannot translate uh, Turkish just yet, so it would be really highly appreciated uh, to know what you're talking about because um, it's hard to tell. Uh, so, now. Let's add those uh, lines. I could use Boolean because Boolean is faster in newer version, but I kind of don't want to create another copy of a copy. So we're just going to create those two, another line here, and we're going to be able to use those lines in a second. So this one will go higher uh, for that one element, and this one is going to go lower. And we're going to use this box as our small pond or swimming pool. Let's just convert it to Adobe Poly and I'm going to show you how to uh, go for an inset. Well, which is really easy. 10 centimeters, no, 25 will look better. And we're going to just shift and drag it to the bottom. You can see that I've already prepared a little bit of extra area on my ground, so it's easier for me. But I'm also going to copy this one polygon to create a new object because this object is going to be crucial for us for our water. So in the previous webinars, I've explained how the glass and water works, but we're going to create this um, yet again for your amusement, guys. Uh, how can I deal with repeated material or texture and make it more realistic by breaking this repeated material? Um, I would say that uh, you can use methods that I would have to unfortunately uh, send you to our training at this point, but um okay let's just say it uh you just use corona mapping randomization which is uh, pretty much going to be part of corona renderer it's a ver it's a hugely powerful tool that i'm going to show you how to uh, use in different scenarios and how to use it to your advantage to create smart materials that will uh, take into consideration the shape and uh, well size of the object in order to make sure that it's going to have the right projection without really a, um, without real need for for a mapping that's going to be fun and it's going to be good for different uh, solutions uh, so how can i create bump and displacement map just using color correction please tell me please um art studio i'm really going to need you to uh, well stick to one um 
question at the time. Um, now, let's go ahead and um, talk about this. There's no real way of creating those just by using Corona Color Correction because it's uh, not going to have enough info. When it comes to map height maps and maps that uh, we typically use for displacement and any kind of uh, special um, solutions, so I'm going to show you a good displacement that we're actually going to use in a second. Uh, so pebbles displacement. So when it comes to displacement maps, it's all about the height maps where we'll be pretty much representing uh, white is going to be maximum value, black is going to be minimum value. So long story short, whatever is going to be white-ish on a texture is going to be higher for the displacement, and what's darker is going to be lower or even zero if it's going to have no impact on the effect itself. So long story short, there is no way of creating those uh, reliably, but there are methods that will allow you to change objects into displacement maps, and then using those maps, um, on your objects. But unfortunately, that's a very uh, broad topic that we're going to talk about probably some other time. Okay, so since we've got our building and uh, mostly done, I want to show you how to do those uh, this area and actually use some pebbles. So the magic of 3D is that you don't need to be very precise. A lot of times 3D is going to be extremely forgiving. So we just need to create some kind of object that's going to be good enough for us. I'm going to set it on minus 39 because I just want it to be one centimeter above my main ground. So when I would be looking through my main camera, if uh, a small glimpse of ground is going to slip through, it's not going to be a problem. It's just going to be a safe uh, even for me. So now we're going to take this object and create those nice um, um, uh, brick a concrete um, yeah sidewalk we're going to create a sidewalk yeah that's what i was looking for in my brain so uh we're probably going to create something that's going to be 15 16 centimeters but we don't have to make it big i want to convert this to a dual poly and quickly get it done so i'm not going to go for precision in this case we're just going to select it and without any snapping or whatever we're just going to select shift and drag and just simply ad uh, adjust the scale of it. So into element, and we're just going to scale it. Again, uh, shift and control to copy, and we can adjust some of the values if that's necessary. Typically, it's not even going to be. I could also save a little bit of time by going for a regular rectangle, and not starting a not, not so with any auto grid, and we're just going to draw a new rectangle, turn off the option start new shape and this way I'm going to create new shapes but are going those are going to be part of the currently existing one so if I'm going to now add shell that's going to have similar values to the one I've uh, used a second ago it's just going to be a huge time saver because editing it each box or setting each box height would be a bit of a problem and in many cases it's going to cost you a few additional seconds Again, if we're not on a timer, uh, we're not going to um, break any records, we're just going to have a little bit of a chill conversation like we have right now, uh, but it's good to at least not waste time on something that just does is not worth it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is select my plane and we're going to add a Boolean modifier to it. When 3ds Max 2024 has a Boolean as a modifier, which is super powerful. Now, to make sure that we can subtract, we're going to select and subtract objects. So this is going to probably be problematic if we're not going to um, select the other operands that manipulate operands, where was it in the modifier? Use live references, okay, display create. Uh, where was it? Because I don't want to lose my objects like this. So um, line, and we want to retain the original. Cookie extract selected, extract selected. Okay, but wait a second. Display circumference, wire shaded display. Okay, so in this case, I've totally forgotten 
what exactly um, I should do with those modifier uh, with to make this modifier work the way I want it. I must make sure that alt X. Okay, I just messed up real bad. So I just made my object invisible for a second. Hello from India, Karela. Nice. <laughs> I have a uh, so Sanal, thank you. Hello from Angola. Okay, sir, we'll wait for that moment. Um, although um, I just got a little bit lost in the what I hello from Cardella okay, again. Hi, sir, for the question: Will you be sharing the assets and the floor plan so we can try it out? Work. I'm going to share the floor plan, but the assets can be obtained from Chaos Cosmos because most of them are here. Uh, but I don't want to hunt for each individual. But considering we have 3,151 different objects, you're probably going to find something even more exciting than I chose. And it's not going to play a big role uh, what, it, uh, what type of tree you're going to take or what chair you're going to be using, as long as the overall setup is going to be uh, more or less uh, proper. Okay, so since I've had a little bit of a problem with this, I'm just going to create a copy and deselect everything and we're going to start using booleans. So boolean and let's subtract it. But I honestly method mesh, okay, but where is the option to retain the original? Okay, I just got a little bit confused, but we're not going to be uh, confused for too long. So let's convert this object back to editable poly and let's continue um ab and uh, from israel okay we had a few students from israel um very nice people uh, so let's continue um if i uh, remember correctly our student uh, name was moshi um sorry if i mispronounced it a uh, very nice guy uh, so let's continue. I also remember one uh, a lovely lady, but I apologize. I cannot pronounce her name at the moment, and I don't want to try uh, too hard because that's going to be annoying to some of you. Uh, so let's uh, see what we can, uh, what are the objects that we're missing? Okay, everything is here. The shape is there. Perfecto. Let's see if we're not overdoing it. We are. So now it's time for the lighting and for the uh, details like the environment that we're going to be using scatters for. So before we really get into many scatters, I want to kind of prepare the environment. Uh, so to do it, I'm going to just uh, select render setup. And we're going to go for our material override. In here, I'm going to go for uh, none and we're going to choose Corona. Corona physical just for the starters. And our setup is going to be extremely easy. Um, so first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to select another Corona map, which is going to be Corona Sky. Corona Sky is super powerful and I believe it's one of the most powerful elements of Corona whatsoever but uh, we're going to find out about this in a second if i'm now going to start rendering you're probably going to notice that the render itself doesn't yet look that exciting because we don't have all uh, that it takes uh, for us to have a good setup first i'm going to go for minus three on my exposure in this case it's going to be quite important i can also see that uh, some of the elements are standing out a little bit so we might want to adjust them uh, but it's mostly going to be this balcony, which is slightly above what I wanted. So I missed calculated at some point or maybe moved one of the elements slightly lower. So let's just move those. So those are not going to be an eyesore as they were a second ago. Uh, so now we're going to just quickly go for our Corona video frame buffer, re-render this because that was a huge mistake of a second ago. And we're going to start seeing the details. That detail is our sun. So Corona again, and we're going to go for Corona sun in this case, and we're just going to make sure that it's going to be uh, set low enough uh, to um, have this nice mood. Probably we're going to lower the exposure even further, and thanks to the magic of Corona, we're going to start adding some additional 
properties, I would say. So one of those properties is going to be our, uh, our uh, clouds. Clouds can be added as soon as possible because uh, for exteriors, it's uh, actually uh, quite important to have a nice environment earlier on because the environment is going to um, set up the mood. So I'm going to turn on the clouds because we can. Uh, we're going to add a bit more variety and uh, we're not going to change the face, but I really want to have quite a big amount of clouds. Uh, this way we're going to get closer to the mood that we're really looking forward to. Okay, now a little bit of cheating is going to be at hand, so we're going to start copying even more objects from our previous scenes, or let's say my students' scene. Uh, so let's start copying uh, because uh, this is going to be pretty much me playing some uh, sims uh, online but um, long story short we're going to, uh, to copy all of those assets and place them in the right positions first i'm going to grab those trees and we're going to use them as our environment mostly uh, so are you using hri no we're using corona sky and that Corona Sky allows us to add uh, clouds and we're going to... But uh, are you asking in general? A lot. If you're asking right now, right now I used Corona Sky. Uh, when you use Corona Legacy and when Corona Physical Material? Uh, thank you for the question, Hugo. Uh, so this is a debatable question, uh, answer, but I believe it's going to be simplest to just say whatever you like it. Uh, so Corona Physical is the newer version of, uh, let's say, physically based uh, standard. Uh, it's closer to what it's supposed to be. It looks closer to what it was intended to do. And it has an updated algorithm. It renders almost the same way. But it also, uh, the physical material also has a few uh, safeguards. Uh, so those safeguards are going to stop you from creating some kind of material that is going to make no sense. So you have no uh, refracting metals, no self-illuminated glass and whatever. Because that would be a little bit physically impossible. Uh, but uh, thanks to the magic of Corona Legacy material, you can pretty much knock yourself out and do whatever you like and create some materials that make absolutely no sense in logic, from a logical standpoint. But is it better? No. Is it worse? Also, no. Is it something that I would recommend you to use? Yeah, but only when you need it. Uh, so uh, we're going to now place a few trees in strate strategic positions. Uh, those positions are also marked on our um, on our uh, floor plan, so we're going to have an easier time whenever you will be working with uh, our floor plans. And now we pretty much are at the point where we just need to start adding the right materials and uh, still work a little bit more on our environment because this is not yet it. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to show you one of the scatters I'm going to be doing and one very important material that I think is actually going to be cool to have. And there's also going to be a um, quick answer between do I scatter this or do I just use textures? And in this case, we're going to be using, te uh, using um, texture, but scattering is not going to be that bad as long as you don't have a better texture. So. Long story short, let's create our first material for today's webinar, and that's going to be Corona Physical as always. Right click, go to Materials, go to uh, Corona, and then Corona Physical Material. Once this loads, we're going to just um, make sure to start by adding base color. So we just drag, go for Corona, Corona Bitmap. When it comes to textures, unfortunately, um, I cannot uh, really share those with you, but I promise you, um, our students get all of those textures one way or another. Uh, so, and unfortunately, this is one of the assets I cannot really give you, but I, I tried, I really did. Uh, so let's go for clean pebbles. This is going to be for the color, but we might as well just uh, take any grayish tone. A uh, clean pebble displacement can be used in this case for our um, base color, but this would be a little bit counterproductive, so we're just going to stick to displacement. We're going to add this in, and thanks to the magic of Corona, we're not going to be um, really 
task to do much more because this is the simplest material ever a bit of roughness for the stones and we're going to probably just work with the displacement itself because i want those pebbles to be three or five centimeters tall and the one thing that's going to be super important for a material like this is making sure that the mapping on our uh, on our object is going to be correctly set up so uvw map let's go for mapping and we want to go for simple plane and just set it to something around 150 by 150. okay now at the moment i cannot see this at all why is this well mostly because this material is uh, now being assigned just like that and we need to click on show shaded material in viewport if it doesn't work we're going to click on our main material and click on that and for some reason it still doesn't work so panels okay mr 3d attacks why are you trying to embarrass me during a live stream okay so show shaded material please please again okay so 3ds max decided that it's the right time to do something really weird but as long as we're going to use this map you can see how the mapping is being projected I think going for 200 is going to be okay-ish in this case. So let's just test how it looks like when we try to render. Hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, hello, Akbarov. Um, I cannot read your name, uh, but uh, the second part was easier. Uh, okay. Hello from Kurdistan. I think you knew that you have viewers from Kurdistan. We do have a few of them from there, but I cannot really vouch. Uh, any uh, for any specific name and it's always new for me uh, to hear uh, such nice places uh, about such nice places uh, so keep them coming guys uh, just start traveling the world uh, because I want to uh, hear more locations uh, it's always fantastic to hear that okay so you can see that now we don't have any effect on our scene because we're still using the material override so let's turn it off or just add this object to exclusion or we can go to preserve and we're going to preserve displacement preserve displacement okay okay dokey and we're going to just wait for a few seconds and we've got our pebbles perfectly done on our um on our um, ground so now we unhide everything and just wait for it to um show this beautiful detail one thing that you may be um wondering okay why does this part doesn't have any pebbles the reason is very simple displacement is being calculated for the current view so if you're going to move your camera uh, some of the displacement was calculated for this area and now we were looking at this area so because of that we didn't see the pebbles in this part uh, because they just didn't load and now we can see that we've got beautiful details. So let's just uh, start finishing this up uh, because we're not so far off uh, from uh, the uh, last um, uh, touches. So how to include and exclude option in Corona Light? Uh, well, uh, all you need to do is go to Corona Chaos Lister. Oh, sorry, uh, Light Lister. Uh, and we're going to, oh, unfortunately, I only have one light in here. So we can just go ahead and add the elements in here. If you mean that specific object is going to have specific quality, you probably have to work with the material. But if you want a specific light to be invisible for reflection, refraction, or whatever option you want, you want to go for, uh, for the lister and go do it um, on mass. You don't want to do it uh, individually for each element because that's going to cost you a tremendous amount of time, but it's doable. Uh, so we just copied our trees so let's copy this huge fence you can see that it's absolutely gigantic so we're going to copy this one element we could again use scatter for this but we're not going to uh, make a movie uh in five minutes make a movie movie i do i think you're going a little bit closer to uh, getting um i would say uh spammy so I'll uh, just uh, let's continue. Okay, so we're pasting in our assets and let's go. Corona, uh, paste from. By the way, you're probably wondering how am I copying from one scene to another? This uh, is going to be easier than you think. It's just a simple plugin. 
A lot of you guys use uh, Copydoor, but I use uh, the one called Copy2 because I just like it. Oh, and by the way, instead of copying objects that you need to be uh, next to one another, let's go ahead and go for Array. And Array is going to be slightly faster this way because in this case, oh, I forgotten, this is a proxy. So we're going to uh, dial it back, convert the proxy to Edible Mesh, and uh, now go for Array. So this way, we're going to introduce those copies faster and it's just going to be more convenient because you don't have to um, work with any kind of opacity or oh, sorry offset because those are going to be literally just touching and that's a very cool thing as long as your object is going to be nice and flat um any similar tutorial while using v-ray unfortunately not at the moment where uh well I would say since I fell in love with Corona, I am not using any other software because I really think it's the best out there. Uh, and I would really feel bad about going back to V-Ray, although it's just as good. Um, most of the techniques that I'm using here so far weren't even related to V-Ray. So you probably could do exactly the same up until this point and even beyond because V-Ray and Corona are super similar at the moment and I believe you're going to be able to uh, deliver quite similar result. Can you make more tutorials about Phoenix FD and active bodies? I think so, but we need to make sure that uh, we actually have audience for that. And at the moment, I'm focusing on making sure that we work mostly with the beginners. Uh, so uh, let's uh, not get into too complicated topics just yet, but we will at some point. Um, okay, so we've got the trees and now I'm going to uh, look at the cheat sheet of the original seen by our student and we're going to just uh, examine some of the parts because I think we're overextending this up to two hours and I don't want to make this a uh, five hours long tutorial. So we're going to just see what was done here and we're going to copy some of the parts. So here we can see some kind of weird um, shapes that are all around the scene. And what are they doing exactly? Well, long story short, those are either light blockers or those are uh, these. So we're going to copy those elements. We're going to copy just the, those surfaces because I want to add the scatters to my scene as well. And I don't want to necessarily build those because that's going to take us a few seconds extra. And again, it's just not worth it. So we're going to, everybody can uh, see how it, uh, how it is built. So those are just rectangles that uh, I didn't want to uh, aim for. And um, so we're going to paste it in. Now let's paste it again. Hope you can forgive me uh, and that I'm cutting some of the corners. It's just that I want to make sure that you guys are also going to um, well, spend some less time with me uh, talking all the time. Okay, talking is not that bad, but wasting your time will be. Uh, so we're just going to uh, speed it up. Now, let's go ahead and create our first Corona Scatter. So we go to our Creation panel, Creation Geometry, and then go to Chaos Scatter. And let's just create our first Corona Scatter. In this case, we're going to use all of the trees that we have in this area uh, for our scatters. The goal in here is to ensure that what we're going to do uh, is um, a small wall or environment that's going to pretty much fill in the gaps for our uh, environment. So distribute, uh, distribute on targeted objects. We're going to distribute on three of those planes. Uh, those are pretty much going to be close to our um, uh, zero surface. Then we're going to go for instanced objects and we're just going to copy those in here. So now the funny part is that everything is just too big because everything is not supposed to be like that. But we can go to our transformations and type in scale and type in 50%. So that way we're going to pretty much just uh, sweetly and uh, seamlessly um, transition to our environment. And now if I'm going to continue and start rendering still with our material overwrite on, uh, with the fence and a little bit of environment that we built, this is going to be slightly easier. Okay, your work is very uh, commendable. And thank you very much for taking time to share your valuable knowledge and experience. 
you are welcome and I'm really glad that you uh, like it. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm waiting for more for a, a Phoenix FD tutorial. Uh, well, um, yes, uh, that's great. But please, Chris, I would highly appreciate just uh, sending one message. We still don't have uh, so many viewers at the moment uh, to, or let's say the chat isn't as active uh, to be, uh, well, spamming. And I don't want uh, our automatic bots to, uh, to grab you and ban you. Uh, that would be a shame because I love talking to you guys. Uh, by the way, guys, what software do you use on a regular basis? I noticed that some of you use um it's not rafa it's not yet finished so it's going to take a while um okay so now we need to go guys do you have uh, sound issues i hope you don't do you think in the future corona will be available for different softwares revit i guess sketchup rhinoceros um it was available for sketchup at some point but they didn't really um well they just didn't do it in the end um, but right now it's available for Cinema 4D and probably it's going to transfer to Maya at some point, but I can't vouch for it. Uh, you would have to actually ask the developers and we're unfortunately not associated. Uh, so now the materials. Glass material is the simplest material you can create when it comes to Corona and uh, we're just going to do it in seconds. Uh, so don't blink um, because we're going to do it so fast. Corona. Going to select it, apply it, and this is the funny part: glass. Then done. Now our uh, our glass is already a part of our scene. Uh, because we can be lazy, I'm going to uh, introduce a few objects that I kind of didn't yet build with you, but I hope you're going to forgive me that I'm introducing stairs and a few props that kind of wasn't weren't there but they are now uh, so i uh, hope that you can forgive me this because we're getting closer to what we really wanted and that's the finishing touches uh, so closer you know what take this here second i see that my assets are a little bit lost so let's put them here we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm getting more and more excited for this, uh, but uh, our materials are now the main focus of ours. Uh, okay. So you guys use Revit and SketchUp and 3ds Max, so thank you, Mahdi. Um, Godwill, Oslo, uh, will and uh, need uh, Okay, um, wait a second. I see that uh, I didn't see that one question, uh, Rafa, that you're currently answering. Uh, so I might uh, be on a different chat. Hi, how much time is the render high quality for this exterior scene? Thank you so much. It all depends on your hardware, but for me it, uh, to have good quality, I needed approximately 20 minutes but it was a print quality and well youtube uh, instagram quality is uh, going to be slightly lower so it all depends on what you want to do with your assets uh, so now let's uh, go ahead and render it for one more time because we're cl getting closer and closer so let's look at it i'm i'm really getting excited because now Oh, I've forgotten to turn off uh, one of the overrides. We still need to make sure that we're not overriding our glass. So let's go to render setup, go to preserve, and now we're going to preserve our glass materials. So that way our render is going to update and we're quickly going to see a little bit more of the overall reason why we went for this additional uh, tree line all around our building. This is going to result in a nicer reflections, especially in those um, lower parts of our glass. Okay, this is starting to look really, really good. I think we're going to adjust the position of our sun a little bit. So I want to move it slightly to the left. So that there's going to be a bit more um, light overall. Okay, I lost uh, my sun in here. So let's select it. 
move it to the side and make sure to put it at an angle so we're going to have a more exciting view to work with look at that it even at this distance a corona uh, doesn't fail so let's make sure to uh, just lock our view to this one viewport at a time okay this is starting to really look good look at the reflections i love it okay uh, should i be getting excited about my own work i hope that you can forgive me that uh, so let's go ahead and make sure to lock in this screen. Okay, so what is our next step? We're probably going to have to go over each and every material in the scene to make it work. But I don't, I kind of don't want to go through this process because overall, overall uh, we kind of need to do just the main four. We need to do the ground material, we need to do the walls material, we need to do the wood material, and uh, the windows material. So you know what? We kind of can do it. Let's look at our reference. What are we looking after? So we're looking after grayish, uh, concrete-ish material, a little bit metallic uh, material that's going to be also used for frames, and uh, some wooden material. So we put oh, and another concrete material. So let's do it. Now, to do it, we unfortunately need to turn off the material override, which is going to result in a very a weird, um, res uh, in a very weird effect. But to avoid having this um, funky town type of rendering, we're going to control A everything, which is kind of a problem sometimes, but we're going to click and select the gray color. So whatever didn't have any color at all is now going to have a regular grayish color that is default for 3ds Max, which is going to just make it a little bit faster and easier for you. I'm returning all the webinars together. How can I solve this? I'm watching many webinars. All of them have the same problem. For example, I can find the drawings, models, textures, and materials used in the exterior, an exterior working object. Uh, so if you want to, we can upload those uh, for you in a second, uh, but it's going to be, um, well, I'm going to need to finish this uh, webinar first. Also, some of our webinars are going to be strictly limited to our website. So you have to visit Visacademy Co. UK to get your hands on the latest and best versions of our, um, of our uh, floor plans. So that would be probably the best bet where you can get most of those. It, the repository is uh, free to download, so you're not going to have any problem whatsoever. Uh, so let's uh, select all the windows and apply the right material to it. For the windows, uh, window frames, as I've already described it earlier, we have three different um, material IDs. For that, I'm going to be able to use multi-sub object. And we don't necessarily want to go for any super complicated material because we just want Corona Physical with a little bit of extras in it. I would say that my students know exactly what I mean by a wobble, but I'm going to just leave it out for our training. And now I'm going to do the basic version. So, uh, you know, our students have to get a little bit of a special treatment. Uh, so I hope that you can forgive me that. And now we're going, this is our material number one. Material ID number two was uh, in the metallic part. So we're going to just go for metal and I'm going to copy this element here so we can just uh, quickly go for some super special mats for our windows. Since I've got all, the, all of our frames selected that we're uh, using, you can see that now parts that are supposed to be black because that's the, the let's say, rubber part it's black now we've got white part for the place where the um filters or the metallic element is and that is going to result in a slightly better uh, view for our uh, overall um, object now i want to make sure that also okay that's not what i was going for but i just use um, I used some kind of shortcut for software that is working in the background uh, but yeah, that was interesting. So now we're going to make sure that our wood is also going to be applied uh, with the same materials. So since we teach our students how to create materials that are more or less bulletproof, I want to make sure that we also try to go over something very similar. And right now I need to select this object, material gets selected, 
And you can see that this material, although it looks slightly complicated, is actually very easy. And this is the one of the first materials that we teach our students how to do. Unfortunately, again, I'm not going to go into details here because uh, I'm just going to show you that um, what we're uh, what is this what it is made out of is just a simple texture that works flawlessly for floor generators and other surfaces that would be uh, perfect honestly you can just use a regular texture and it's going to be um, just a-okay but um, because our students uh, well they need to get a little bit of a special treatment and if you want to be one of those students that get it make sure to visit our website although if you have any questions feel free to ask because i'm not going to be um that kind of person that won't tell you anything i'm just not allowed to tell you everything uh, so let's go ahead quick glimpse of the material parquet and let's just go ahead and apply it to our objects and again perfecto it's going to work flawlessly on all the surfaces. Now, copy. As I said, um, we're going to teach you how to do smart materials for your scenes, and this is one of those. Uh, so, smart materials means that it's going to uh, be uh, you're going to be able to adjust it for the surface without really uh, needing any kind of additional help with it. Uh, so, long story short, as long as you can master some of the basics you're going to be able to work faster and more efficiently. So paste, okay? Now let's go ahead and apply it once again, and we're just going to add it in. Okay, so long story short, now we pretty much covered most of our walls. We still need a darker tone for the elements here, an element there, and possibly the walls. And so we're going to kill well, all the birds with one stone, I'm just going to copy this material and we're going to get it rougher, slightly brighter. So we're going to put the roughness slightly higher, something around six, and we're going to make it slightly brighter for those parts. And uh, I think 30 or 45 is going to be perfect. And now let's try rendering yet again. I've forgotten about the bottom. Uh, so the bottom needs some kind of marble. To get marble textures, what you can do is you can go to Chaos Cosmos browser and just type in some kind of marble. So marble, let's see what they have for us. Hmm, I think this one is going to do. So let's just add it in. Material editor, let's turn it on. Let's go for our Chaos Cosmos. Download this material, wait for it a few seconds. Okay, great. And now let's just drag and drop it into our material editor. The material is going to be one of the best possible case scenarios. Although I hate this part, I despise this part because it's marble. Who needs that? Base IOR, you're kidding me. So long story short, all we needed all along was just a good diffuse. And thanks to the fact that it has Corona mapping randomization, plus 3D planner, it's going to be so much easier for me to add this material to my whole scene. But we're going to have to actually add it. Uh, so how about we select the right polygons to do it? Okay, that's that'll be it. That, that's the uh, amount of polygons I wanted to add this. Uh, Peter, thank you. I got my questions answered. Uh, that's great. Um, do you aim uh, the sun directly to the project or is it better to aim far with the target like in the example? Uh, that's a very good question. I typically um, don't care. I just make sure that the sun is not in my way. Uh, so my plan is to put it somewhere where it just doesn't um, bother me. I set it some um, in a position where I can easily grab it when I need it, but also I don't want to make this uh, too uh, much of a hassle, um, or let's say uh, I don't want to make it too small, too big, I just want to have an easy selection of it. Uh, when I am uh, doing exteriors, I also do something extra, and I'm going to show you a neat trick for you because you asked that question, um, and I think it's going to help you a lot if, uh, with your projects. So give me a minute. Uh, we're just going to apply the materials. Thank you. Okay, so now the materials are added. It took a while, but uh, we just did it. 
So now, with our Corona Sun, you want to go to this bracket here, Manage Selection Sets. You add it here, you name it Sun. And let's imagine that you have your scene, right? You are setting up this in real time and your sun is somewhere out there in a scene um, in between billions of objects. So what you want to do is, um, well, go for this bracket, go for the selection, and it's always going to quickly grab that object. So it's, uh, long story short, not going to have impact where the position is uh, when this where the sun is positioned in your scene because you're going to have a quick way of selecting it also what's going to be cool uh, whenever you want to enlarge it never scale it go for local coordinates in your um, um, in your movement and just go for local and move it away the further away you move it the bigger it's going to become but the effect is going to be absolutely exactly the same you can even put it below your scene uh, as long as it's at the same angle as long as it's at the same angle it's really going to have exactly the same impact on the scene overall you can put it in a box you can put it, hide it in a sphere you can even hide it but uh, at that point you're going to have to live with other um, problems uh, so this is going to i hope it's going to be helpful uh, probably we're going to actually use this uh, sun for a second and actually put it slightly lower because I want to create a bit of a different mood. Slightly lower um, sun position. Uh, so the sky follows and it's going to um, have a little bit of better looks if we put it lower. Because I want a bit of that, um, how to say this, um, sunset effect in our scene but I believe okay we're getting there but now I overdid it we're going to increase the exposure slightly but and uh, this is going to be a common problem a lot of times when you will be setting up your scene it's not going to be that easy because if your sun is going to go too low and this uh, and your clouds are already on uh, at some certain angle it's going to be impossible for you to set up nice shadows and your uh, nice sky at the same time so what we can do is fake it um and i mean it we can just pretend that we care about photorealism no i it is going to be photorealistic, but uh, physical correctness what I, uh, is what I wanted to say. So we're going to create an instance of our sky and look how much different it's going to react to our um, overall scene. Our scene is going to actually react and how much sun is going to change uh, based on just the position of the sun. You can see that now we've got more of the light in um, light visible and it's cool but i think we're going to put it slightly higher so we can see more of the sun use corona color correct for hri yes we can but what i'm going to do is we're going to create a nice copy of our corona sky we're going to enable clouds for the copy and we're going to move it via corona color correct so corona corona color correct and we're going to apply it in here right now we're also experiencing quite a lot of um bloom and glare which isn't the the worst problem to have but you can see that it really ruins some of the reflections if we're going to uh, allow it to be like that so we're probably going to change the angle or what we can do is turn off visible in reflections and it's going to pretty much fix it because it's no longer going to have that impact on our scene. At the same time, it's going to be softer on the overall scene because the reflection is no longer going to be that problematic. Or we can just go for direct input. So what do we do with this setup? We turn on the clouds for the Corona sky that, that is a copy and we add, apply it to our direct visibility and we just apply it in here. So it's going to be instance and I could go for a bit higher turbidity, so it's going to be slightly uh, more uh, yellowy. So this way, we're going to have this option to add the sky independent, uh, sorry, clouds independent uh, to our sun's position. And long story short, it's going to look just perfect. And now the funny part is that uh, we're pretty much done with setting up our environment. We still need to position some of the trees, rescale this and that, but long story short, we're mostly done. 
but uh, because we are running a little bit out of time, I'm going to speed up the process and actually cheat again. And we're going to examine where do we position our additional um, additional lights. Okay, so in the original, we can see that the, uh, the uh, sun is at the very shallow angle. That's what Domin Dominica has decided on. And the funny, 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 funny part is that we've got a plethora of lights in our interior itself. So we're going to examine what's going on here because I don't want to uh, copy each. Okay, you know what? We're going to copy them. We're going to copy all of those lights and we're going to see exactly what impact they have on our scene. So you can set them up as well, but we're not going to be experimenting on this one regard because it's going to uh, cost us additional 15 minutes but I think it's going to be uh, really easy to set up for you as well because we're going to walk you through the process and uh, let's try to set up a more similar angle, okay? I think it's, uh, this is going to be fine. Now let's paste the lights and we're going to examine them in a second. Can I watch this live webinar later? YouTube will save it live. It's not going to be saved live, but it's going to be rewatchable on our channel. So yes, you will be able to watch it at any time. Uh, so we're going to move those elements slightly to the left. Okay, perfecto. And now we've got it done. So let's examine what's going on here. Those are LED lights that are going to be working with our uh, curtains. Mostly all of the options for visibility are off. Same goes for the huge spheres inside, which are going to act as we would be having some kind of additional light inside or just, well, light. Uh, so this is going to uh, make sure that we have a little bit of extra mood. We also have some kind of mood lights on the top of our ceiling. A second, I think we're overdoing it. Let's just select one light at a time. Okay. Now, with that light selected, we can see that it's actually behind. I've selected the wrong one. Uh, wait a second. This one. We've got those mood lights that uh, are IES. So IES lights are going to be special light profiles that will allow you to uh, work with 3ds Max and, uh, sorry, that will work with 3ds Max and will create a special effect for the light. Right now, they're a little bit too low or too high, actually. We're going to select those lights and move them lower. Perfect. Those are supposed to go lower as well then. Okay. Those are fine. Let's move those slightly lower in my case. And that's pretty much going to uh, mean that we're mostly done with our exteriors. Okay. I kind of need to readjust those elements. Uh, so you know what? I I feel tempted to move to our student scene because all of that is getting a little bit out of hand uh, right now because there's hundreds of small elements that we need to handle. And long story short, it's just about positioning um, some of the smaller lights. Uh, and I just want to walk you through the process. So we're probably going to do it together. Okay, uh, so let's go through the scene of our students. Sorry for that. Um, okay, so we've got our rim lights that are on the top of the building. They follow along the, uh, the roof, so it's quite easy. We've got two lights with IES that is built in Corona. So again, it's just two lights here, two lights here. Simple. Three lights at the bottom and uh, some mood lights on the walls. Again, super simple. We've got additional light that adds uh, some of the a mood to inside of the scene. So we're basically just shining a little bit of light out of the um, of the building to make sure that it's going to uh, produce the proper effect. And uh, since we're already on the topic of setting up the light, we also have those gigantic sphere lights inside of our interior. Again, those are invisible for reflection, refraction, direct visibility, and all the rest of goodies. So um, we typically want to set up them uh, for some neutral color because if you set them up for a neutral color, you're going to be able to use one magical trick that I really love about this Max Corona. Uh, sorry, Corona. Actually, we need to go to our Open Material uh, Light Mix editor. We're going to uh, go for 
that and we can uh, go for create where do uh, did those 21 million polygons came from i've actually opened the original version of this scene so effect uh, velox sorry for that i've uh, remember when i told you about copying the assets I didn't copy all of them uh, because I wanted uh, this webinar to be a bit faster. I've actually, uh, and well, didn't go for it. And our scene, although is, uh, well, we can copy the light and we can adjust all the elements. We're going to move on to the scene by, done by our student because we're running out of time and this is going to be a little bit longer. But long story short, we're on the very uh, last step of it and right now we would have to just set up our lighting and tracing all of the lights is going to be a bit of a problem for me because it's going to take us a fi additional 15 minutes and I really need to do it under two hours uh, so we need to move on to this version so I uh, hope that this explains this uh, difference but we long story short did exactly the same setup but one additional light that I didn't disclose is right behind our camera it's a very strong orange light that's going to be set to 2000 Kelvin so it mimics the effect of our Sun so although we're not going to see a lot of it it's going to be more or less giving us the same um, the same mood um, so at this point we're going to go ahead and uh, start rendering from this scene uh, because I kind of don't want to test the angles on our Sun but I might just copy it and it's going to be exactly the same uh, so interactive light mix that we just set up is going to give us a uh, one ability that uh, Corona are you going to add a fog in the background in this tutorial no uh, this is not one of those tutorials where we add the fog for our uh, for our scene because it would take us a little bit too much time uh, so toggle all we can now go to interactive light mix turn on on and off everything the environment alone looks exactly the same as uh, the, in the scene that we did uh, so all we need to do now is trace the sun so the sun is going to give us this effect. Let's see what setup. Uh, sorry guys, I'm uh, new on this sorts of webinars. Uh, don't worry about it. There is nothing to be sorry about as well. What uh, we need to uh, also adjust is the sun size. Once you have your sun, um, the size is going to determine how big or how soft the shadows are going to be. Right now, we could just adjust our um, scatters uh, density, and that would result in a little bit of a change between this, uh, between the density of our environment. And again, it would cost us a few minutes, so please excuse me for that. It's just one of those experiments uh, we're going to be able to do um, offline. Um, so uh, with um with our lights we just need to go over some of them you can see that most of those lights are not going to even pay, uh, play a role but we've got two lamps uh, in front of our yard uh, so we can see that we pretty much have those in here so those are quite strong and uh, this gives us a bit of a extra mood so this is the light i mentioned because this is the light behind and that gives us this extra small but very significant orange-ish golden uh, effect that kind of mimics sun from uh, behind the trees and that way we're getting a little bit more of a mood next we've got our uh, lights that our um, around our elevation so it's just an extra light that's going to give us extra reflection inside long story short it's all about adding a little bit of the beauty now we're going to turn on all of those lights that are part of our rim uh, so long story uh, in this um in this instance we're just adding those rim lights that will create the extra mood and uh, that's pretty much how we can do it so those lights are uh, going to be again really easy to set up if we just um, set them to value around 50 and then in light mix we can go a little bit lower or higher depending on our individual needs and uh, depending also on what you want to achieve uh, in your scene whenever you want to uh, work with 3ds max 
um, grouping your lights and uh, making sure that you have a lot of instances is going to be the golden ratio you want to go for. Thanks to the fact that earlier, um, thanks to the trick that I shown you earlier, our um, direct visibility allows us to have independent environment to our uh, direct visibility. So again, we're gaining a little bit of an additional, um, additional advantage over um, our and sorry we we have additional option to set up our environment the way we want it and long story short you can quickly change the night mode and um, sorry day mode to night mode if you want to by turning on the lights uh, off and on uh, unfortunately due to the fact that i don't want to do the part two we're not going to be setting up all of the lights uh, but if that would be a big issue for you guys, I can go over that um, in the next webinar because I don't want to uh, leave you hanging. Uh, but I promise we're going to set our um, floor plan and give our, uh, sorry, <laughs> add the link to our floor plan in a second of, uh, under the video description so you're going to be able to participate just like i did and remember all of the assets in the scene were uh, either chaos cosmos or freebies so you're not going to have any problems uh, redoing exactly what i did mike uh, do you have any plans for a post-production webinar later you know that also sounds like a good idea but i shy away from any kind of post-production can we uh, use this personal portfolio when we do it and possibly share it with you for some feedback? Again, I apologize for the questions. Red Act, no need for you to apologize. You can use this for your portf personal portfolio. Just make sure to name it case study because otherwise um, the um, it's going to be easier this way. And uh, since uh, it's not going to be possible to uh, call it illegal drawing something that is in real life, as long as you don't claim that the design is yours, it's absolutely fine as far as I know. Um, how, how do you set a, a glass with wobbliness reflection? That's one of those things that I'm going to probably keep for our students. Amazing webinar, uh, Mike. Thank you, Malad. It's a very nice thing to hear. Also, I think this is going to be enough for today. Two hours is enough. So, uh, guys, we're going to create another webinar next Thursday. So, uh, if you want to, you can email us some suggestions. Also, uh, just to make it absolutely clear, if you want to um, send us uh, some suggestions, go to info Academy Co. UK. Name those emails suggestion. Otherwise, we might miss it and uh, it's going to be easier for me to look into that and we're just going to have a nice list of topics over the week we're going to have a few um, polls on our Instagram so you can participate and decide what interior or exterior we're going to be working with and also <clears throat> if you want to sign up to our training uh, you want to go to Viz Academy Co UK we just launched a new um, new group so we're going to now have a rec uh, recruitation or enrollment for uh, september so if you want to join that group you might want to um, try grabbing this spot as soon as possible because 9th september is going to be probably one of those groups that will have even more elements in the um, in the curriculum not because we're limiting anything but we're constantly creating new videos and we're uh, making sure to um, let's say enhance the experience for all of our students so if you're going to join our training you're going to have uh, three webinars per week which uh, are a little bit different to the one we had today Typically, we go over work of our students, so we review your progress, and based on our videos, you're going to be able to achieve excellent results uh, due to the fact that you will be working five days a week, and we are going to be, um, let's say, demanding a little bit, uh, because the training is, um, well, going to be quite highly paced, but uh, you can read our reviews that it's exactly worth it. Plus, on top of everything, you're going to have unlimited access to uh, all of our platform, uh, materials, tasks, videos without any expiration date. And for the whole duration of our training, you're going to have access to our brilliant support 
um, which is now being handled by Ula, Mary, and Javier, uh, which are available at different hours, but seven days a week. Uh, so you're going to have access to not only me, but also our amazing uh, tutor uh, tutors, which are seasoned professionals. Um, okay guys this is it for today thank you very much for your attention sorry that it took longer than anticipated and we didn't do exactly everything i planned but i believe it was still educational uh, so next time i'm going to try to be even faster and we're going to do even more but this time we're going to finish the right way so thank you again uh, tune in for the next webinars make sure to leave a like subscribe to our youtube channel it really greatly helps us i know this is a very long way of saying goodbye but i promise this is it for today thank you very much and see you next week Bye bye